So let's talk about breathing. And I guess when we're talking about the mechanics of breathing, we want to make a couple of cl clarification points, really. We are talking about muscular, muscular contraction and relaxation. So first of all, when we breathe in and when we breathe out, we're effectively drawing in the outside air into our lung. And then we put and relaxation in here. But also when we when we breathe it out, we're of course we're releasing it back out into the outside air. Really, you know, like kind of like we're breathe, we're, we're taking air in and we're pushing air out. And we want to recognise this as a mechanical process. And I want you to be aware of contraction and relaxation. The second point before we like really get into the nitty gritty of this, I want you to think about that it's partly an active process. It's partly active and it's partly passive. Now I've talked about breathing in and breathing out. You might want to initially just sort of pause the video here, reflect on which is the active part of breathing out. And finally, before we get cracking, we are only going to talk about breathing at rest. So that effectively covers what we're going to do within this tutorial. So with that in mind, let's do something a little bit unusual actually, first of all. The first thing I'm going to do is bring an image to you and instantly tell you to completely ignore this, this, and this. We are not going to learn about these respiratory muscles today. There are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, these muscles here are only involved in breathing during exercise, or what we might call force breathing. But the second thing is we don't sort of cover them on the, this qualification. So we're going to focus specifically on the role of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. But I think it's kind of nice to know that there are other muscles involved. They're just there. We're not going to question you on them or anything like that. But they're just there in case you want to have an awareness of them. So Let's start here. We have the diaphragm. And as you'll notice straight away, the diaphragm is this muscle which sort of forms the base of this area here. It's sort of in that shape there, okay? So we've got this diaphragm and it's the base. And I'm going to describe it as the base of the thoracic cavity. And you might think, hang on a minute, James. Thoracic cavity, that's a little bit wordy. The thoracic cavity is simply a kind of a posh way to say the chest cavity or the thorax cavity, hence the thoracic cavity. So the diaphragm is the base of the thoracic cavity. Now, when this diaphragm contracts, I want you to be aware that it contracts and it kind of flattens, not quite as flat as I've just made it here, but it flattens into this position here. So imagine this sort of muscle contracting and flattening like this. What this actually has um, makes the rib cage do or the thoracic cavity do is it forces it out a little bit like this and it also forces it up a little bit so what we can say then is the diaphragm is involved in breathing breathing in or we could call it inspiration inhalation breathing in and it does so by contracting it contracts okay you could also by the way say it flattens it, it's a it's a flattening effect or it's pushed down into this flattened position now what that does is it increases the area of this thoracic cavity the area increases so imagine if the area increases because effectively the diaphragm's pulled down it's pushed the rib cage ribs and the thoracic cavity up and outwards the area increases but what that also does is it decreases the pressure in the lungs okay so imagine now we've now got lower pressure air in the lungs we've got higher pressure air in the world outside the air literally just rushes in now to be clear this is not diffusion some people get this confused diffusion has to involve a partially permeable membrane this is simply a pressure gradient between the outside air and the air inside the lungs so of course the air moves in okay now to help with that diaphragm we also have another bunch of muscles and i'm going to kind of sketch them in let me choose a reasonable color i'm going to sketch them in here there's a bunch of muscles here and what do you notice about these muscles? They are in between the ribs, right? They are in between the ribs. Well, guess what? Inter means between, and costa, or costal, costa means rib. It's Latin for rib. So in between the ribs muscles. Now, what these muscles do is when you're breathing in, so again, let's put in here breathing. When you're breathing in, when you breathe in, these muscles contract, okay? These muscles contract. So what happens there? The intercostals contract, they pull the rib cage, let me choose a different color, they pull the rib cage up and out. I'm actually gonna write that in here, up and out, up and out. So what happens? The thoracic cavity, the area increases. We've got a decreased pressure in the lung. So what happens? The, there's a pressure gradient, the air in the outside world rushes into our lung through our mouth, through our nose, and therefore we breathe in, we inhale, we inspire 
Okay, so that is actually how that's happening. So confirming your mind that for breathing in during uh, during rest, we have got the diaphragm contracting and we've got the in between the ribs intercostal muscles contracting. That is how that happens. Now, right at the start of this, I said to you that breathing is both an active and a passive process. Would you agree with me that the active part we have just addressed? It is active because the diaphragm and intercostal muscles, they contract the pull, the ribs upwards and outwards, decrease the volume of the thoracic cavity, sorry, increase the volume of the thoracic cavity and decrease pressure in there. That's the active part. Well, the passive part is all about breathing out. Okay, breathing out. And what do we mean by this? Well, breathing out is what we call, exhal let's actually write this in, exhalation exhalation or you can simply say or you can say expiration all of those terms are absolutely legitimate okay but what's going to happen now is the diaphragm is going to relax and return to its dome shape here back to its dome shape like this the intercostal muscles they're going to relax and they're going to sort of allow the ribs to fall back downwards so what happens well of course now through a passive relaxation the rib cage moves down and in Okay, we therefore get an in. Oh, sorry, we get a. Let me do that better. <laughs> we get a decrease in area of the cavity of the thoracic cavity. So what does that mean? Because there's less area in there, less space. Basically, we get an increase up arrow in pressure, and what happens? Air is pushed or bellowed outwards to the outside world. In other words, we breathe out. So I want to come back to that first premise. We have got a mechanical, muscular process. That's what it is. No one's encouraging this area and come and be in here with those uh, O2 molecules and nitrogen. Mo no, this is simply the drawing of air from the outside world by a change of pressure. How does that happen? It's both active and passive through the contraction and subsequently de um, a relaxation of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. And of course, as we've said, is inhalation is active, breathing in is active and breathing out is passive and it's a really nice way to summarize. Thank you.